tuning in for another edition of Industry Conversations 101. My special guest tonight with me is the queen herself, uh, Star. So she's going to be coming in tonight and uh, kicking it with, with us for a little while. And we're going to have a little girl talk with Star and to, you know, pretty much see what's on her mind tonight in regards to hip hop. So, yeah. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to DJ Gates um, for, you know, giving us the mix tonight as well. Hey there, how are you? Well, how are you? I had a little uh some technical difficulties, but I'm I'm in effect. I'm here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech, you know, it's it's okay. It, it's okay. Um, but you know, just just as I said before, uh before you came on, it was such an honor to have you on tonight. Um, you know, kicking it with me, um, actually having a little girl talk tonight, and then also talking about the state of hip hop right now. I, I'm telling you, like, I'm a fan. First and foremost, I'm a fan. Um, oh, my God. Like, you are a true lyricist, a true MC. Um, yes, shouts out to you, Queen. Definitely. You. Welcome, 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 welcome to the show. Glad to have you on the show with me tonight. So how have you been doing during this pandemic? You know, I know that, you know, we have the Delta variant now. So, but how have you been doing? I'm, I'm, I'm well, um, actually outside of music, I am somewhat of an essential employee. So I have been outside the whole time. So I've just really been focused on uh, keeping my immune system strong, uh, social distancing, masking up, just keeping my thoughts really positive and, and being smart about what I'm doing because I'm coming into contact with so many different people. And, uh, you know, I don't go anywhere. I don't really need to go, uh, but, you know, it, it's, ooh, we could get off into a whole lot of things about that because I know a lot of people um, see it a lot of different ways. And um, I think that it's really important to not be fearful, yet be aware and, and, and be smart about how you're moving because fear weakens our immune system. So regardless of what anyone is saying, you want to keep your immune system as strong as possible. That is super important, vaxxed or unvaxxed. Uh, social distancing or not, I cannot stress enough how important having a strong immune system is in this day and time. Definitely. Right, 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 definitely. I think just as you said, I think a lot of people really don't understand all oh, really, you know, taking care of yourself, taking care of the body and basically making sure that you do have a strong immune system with all this stuff that's going on right exactly. now. I mean, we're, we live in a new day and time, you know, so many things are, are, are going on, you know. Um, originally from Memphis, Yes. I was raised in Atlanta, so true Southern girl, which I'm a Southern girl as well. So yeah, definitely. And so tell me what were some of your influences? Because as I state, as I stated before, you are a true MC. Um, your 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 lyrics, uh, your delivery. I mean, you must have some heavy influence. So tell me a little bit about your influences. Um, heavily, heavily influenced by East Coast hip hop. I have to give it up. Most people don't believe I'm from the South. Uh, <laughs> the spirit of hip hop completely, the hip hop Holy Ghost walked in. I caught the spirit. Um, <laughs> then Daddy Kane, Rakim, LL Cool J, MC Light, uh, Queen Latifah, Special Ed, Ice Cube, Red Man, um, Nas, Biggie, Tupac, MC8, hieroglyphics uh i just i'm i'm a, an outcast goody mob i'm so very influenced but it, it uh by so many um brilliant lyricists but specifically when i started rhyming it was a lot of native tongues yes slick rick rock him uh public enemy x clan kmd so i a brand nubian i came up on that so i had no choice but to be super lyrical because of who i was listening to yeah and yeah you know and i can tell it because 
your delivery, it reminds me, it takes me back to the essence of hip hop, especially with female MCs, you know, there's not too many of you, when I say you, there's not too many of you out there, you know, um, when I listen to, you know, your records, you remind me of MC Light, uh, Queen Latifah, just as you talk about Public Enemy, Chuck D, um, the essence of hip hop. Do you think that hip hop has elevated or do you think that it has taken a step back? Okay, so that is a very interesting question because when we talk about hip hop, we even going back um, to the origin, we always had um, party, party records, mm -hmm. uh, you know, MCs that were entertainers more so than they were, were hyper lyrical. We always had, you know, people talking about sex, clothes, money, drugs, that's always been there. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily what we have on the mainstream is still that essence of hip hop. I feel like it's definitely, um, a hybrid, uh, it has um, mutated. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, we keep it with the virus thing. Yes. You yes. know, it has mutated into its whole thing. Um, however, the way that the youth right now are making music is reflective on the world that they live in and what they see. I mean, a lot of a lot of people from my era get very mad about mumble rap and, and the kids, you know, talking about lean and this. A lot of these kids are the children of crack babies, the Ooh. children of parents who did ecstasy and all kind of other drugs. I mean, because we were the heroin babies in the 70s. We were the heroin babies. You know, some of us were coke babies. So it, to get mad at them for being a product of their environment and what they were around. I mean, I, these babies eat, you know, hot Cheetos for breakfast. So what kind of music do you expect to be made from people that come from that type of <laughs> environment? Yeah, you know what it. I mean? Um, so that's, that's how I rationalize it. Um, because that music is not for me. Gotcha. So it's not for me. So if I don't like it, I don't listen to it. Um, I don't think that it takes away from hip hop in its essence because there are still so many artists that are making that good organic hip hop music. So there's countless, they just may not have the same uh, mainstream platforms that let's say that were had in the eighties and nineties because in the eighties and nineties, the mainstream music was the good hip hop music because that right. was out. You know what right. I mean? I was having this conversation with somebody a couple of weeks ago, like, you know, Public Enemy was a mainstream hip hop group. Tribe Called Quest was a mainstream hip hop group. x was a mainstream hip hop group because that was the standard at that time. Right. So um, that that's how I cite it. I feel that because we have um, the internet and we have a lot more independent artists that hip hop is still very strong because we we have that lane now to do it mm -hmm. in. so it just really depends on if you want to look at it glass half full glass half empty i don't really business about what's on the radio right now because that's not for me right right i get it and i mean it's it's you know it's the same thing for me because a lot of the the like you said old school hip-hop we find a lot of it, and I say vintage, because now to, to some of the newer um, artists, it's vintage. So a lot of that is on YouTube. You can find a lot on these podcasts. Um, you can also find majority of some radio stations now that just cater to the, the newer style, which they call trap now, like you said, has mutated um, into something different. And then now you, just, you also have the old school hip hop that I like to listen to. Um, I love rap content that has meaning, that does talk, that does tell stories, and that also that that basically talks about things that we can relate to. You right. know, not saying that some of the trap music that we hear now that is it's not relatable because some of the things that these kids talk about now, they do speak of the things like you said, speak about right. what they see. They right. they talk about their right. environment. Right. So, like you said, you can't really get mad at them because they're talking about what they see every day. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it, it's, and, un, 
it's unrealistic to expect them to rap the way that we rapped. It's right. just, it is. I'm right. not saying that they should not go back and learn uh, because, you know, that is the foundation. But hip hop is still very young. It's only what, 48 years old? It's, right. it's still right. very it's young. Still young. It's still very young in 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 um in the grand scheme of things, looking at you know other musical genres, and I feel like we still have a lot of room um to grow. And mm-hmm. I mean, because look, we got we have MCs in their fifties, right? Yes. And yes. also this this ageism, along with the sexism in hip hop, there's also this ageism. But like, we can really make this thing whatever we want. It doesn't have to be old school. It could be classic. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just even we we did we set the tone. I think that when the industry got involved in it, the industry started making the standards, but those standards have never been for those of us who kept it true to the original art form. We make our own standards. So um right. I, I feel like you you want we want people to quote unquote keep it real, but then we get mm. mad when people rap about what they know in 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 regards to the newer music so i don't think that you know i don't think that it will 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 will, we will agree on this because i know people that i don't care i hate all that music i just don't even listen to it really and give it energy and i do have a you know a teenager so you know i do hear the stuff that he's listening to and i don't want to shut him down because I I had my parents didn't like my music either, you know, but I, I do, he definitely is being exposed and he's been exposed, you know, to the to the roots and um of of hip hop music. You know, he knows lyrical hip hop, whatever. So um yeah, it's just being an artist is just uh critiquing somebody else's art, you know, because then you can say I know oh, how it is. Yeah, because even when we yeah. say somebody's whack, oh well. If it's wag to you, but they still have a fan base. So I guess, you know, I just, I, I started, I was trolling on the internet earlier t- saying uh, on Twitter, uh, can y'all just listen to the song without trying to figure out the sample and, um, you know, overanalyze the lyrics. And girl, they came right. on my neck. And yeah, I, I caught they that came today. came on my neck. They, <laughs> I was called everything but a child of God, but it was the way that I worded it. I wasn't saying that you shouldn't try to figure out samples or analyze lyrics but I come from the school of premiere saying straight up and down y'all are violating your sample snitching why are you putting all of this stuff on the internet I don't I do what you want to do but that's some people's internet persona oh I know what sample that is yeah enjoy the music and 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 not, and that's not saying that you shouldn't analyze or whatever, but I mean, uh, none of my lyrics are ever right on genius. So y'all lyric analyzers are doing a horrible job. Uh, that's all I'm saying. I know. Like, I, I know. Yeah. It, it, they got it, really it's offended. Like, oh, yeah. what music appreciation back in school. Like, baby, I went to school when there was a music appreciation. Right. Exactly. It, y'all, exactly. y'all just think you know everything and you feel like it's your job. The fun about coming from the era we came from, you did have to go to the record store to dig. You couldn't go on the internet and type in who sampled this. I cheating, man. I cheating the game, man. I'm gonna be an old. I'm gonna be a. I'm gonna be an old fuddy duddy about that. Yeah, yeah. That's why it is kept. I mean, I was just with uh, a a a lot of people's favorite producer a couple of weeks, and we would go and we were listening to music and one on one. What's up? Where this come from? Who is this? So I do it, but I don't get on the internet and do it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they do it a lot on TikTok now. You see that a lot on TikTok where everybody's trying to figure out where the sample came from. And back in the day, you know, we didn't do that. You know what I mean? We just we just didn't do that. You know, Not on but TikTok, it, we did it, but we didn't. That was the fun of it. Right. The, the dig, the that y'all can't eat ain't even fun no more. Right, exactly. You and know? so it. It, it's 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 just one of those things now to like you said overanalyzing lyrics, uh, always trying to figure out where the sample came from. So I mean we we just we see it we see so much of it now. And, and speaking of that, you work when you talked about heavy hitters like favorite producers. You work with some heavy hitters, and then not to mention you also headlined um, the B side hip hop festival in the UK. So what was that like? I know that had to be like mind blowing because 
the UK is totally different from, you know, the US. They uh, honestly, quite as kept, they dig more of the culture than more than what we do. You know what I mean? And this hit is crazy because you would think that it would be us that dig the culture, but they dig, even from R&B, they dig the culture so much more than what we do. So tell me what was it like, you know, being a headliner and then also being in the UK? You know, abroad, yeah, definitely the culture is is where is embraced way more. And I think when I talk to people over there, they didn't always like the access to the music, like a lot, a lot of the access that we have, we're spoiled because we have access to a lot. So um a lot of things, even like with TV shows, they get them way later than we got them. So uh the like B boying and B girl, that is huge. That that's bigger than MCing. Like this at the at the festival, graph, like the government is giving them like you know funding, like here's walls, only y'all can use these walls. Like, you know what I mean? Wow. I'm walking around in Birmingham, England, and like, oh hi, star. You know, like people knew who I was. Like that was like everything to just mm. it's very it was very humbling. Um, I loved it over there. I'd been overseas before I'd been to Norway and I'd been to Canada, which is, you know, not really what it is. It's a different country, so whatever. But <laughs> um, the appre a great appreciation for lyricism, um, a great appreciation for all aspects and facets of the culture. Um, and just, I was warmly received and I cannot wait to go back. So it was great. I got to perform with uh, two other uh, international artists, uh, the sister named Ty, from she's Senegalese, but she's based in France, and uh, my sis Yugen Blackrock, who's from South Africa. So that was a really wow. powerful thing having all of this powerful, you know, female goddess, you know, original woman energy. Um, and just, just it was just a dope, really dope vibe, like even down to the music that they were playing, you know, in, in between and before the show actually started. Right, right. So like, you know, when we talk about, you know, the culture, we talk about so many things happening, especially for females, female MCs. Um, and, you know, we, we have a lot, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, uh, you know, Remy Ma. But the, the one thing that I've seen a lot where you see the change, and what I say by the change is where you see the mainstream hip hop artists like Nicki Minaj. Like I remember when Nicki Minaj first came out, her mm -hmm. flow, her delivery, was it was it was street it was raw it was she was to you know flowing over you know uh real rugged hip-hop beats yep. then soon as she became mainstream it was just like the change it was more pop um it was more where she no longer was the home girl that we know it was now mainstream barbie girl da -da this that and the third you know what do you feel about that like you know because I know what my opinions are, you know, when it comes to mainstream and how mainstream strips away a lot of times, if you let it, I say, if you let it, um, will strip away the uniqueness of you and try to change you into something else opposed to you being true to who you are. So what is, what, what is your opinion about that? When it, when, you know, when artists are mainstream and then they end up, you know, switching or changing um, or going with a flowing or going along with the flow. I mean, you know, they signed a contract, so they are bound by their contract and that's a choice that they made. I choose to stay independent so that I can have autonomy. Uh, I'm, I'm not chasing a Grammy. If I got one, cool, but I'm not chasing that. I'm not, I don't want to be that because yeah. I, I, I look at Lauren Hill and God bless Lauren for being a martyr the way that she yes. was. Because uh, Lauren, what happened with Lauren is exactly the reason why I'm independent as fuck and I will remain that way uh, indefinitely. Because mm -hmm. you have to be very strong. Um, I mean, because the men do it too. So it's not, it's not like... I, you know, this is a thing that only happens to women when you make those, you know, agreements and you sign those contracts and you've taken this loan because that's what your advance is. You've taken this loan and you have to pay it back and they're putting all this money into your videos and to this and that, you know, you have to make something that's going to sell. Right, so you right. become, you know, a product 
And now you have to be marketed and and because people have to buy into it because you got to pay that loan back. So uh I mean that 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 is what it is. And you know, there are so many women that are independent artists that I mean it's sad that we don't hear about more of that on a quote unquote mainstream level. Like, I mean, you know, Rhapsody is one who I can think of that Rhapsody has pretty much stayed true, you know, to who she's yeah. been, to who she's been since she started. And she has seen a lot of mainstream success without appearing to have compromised herself very much. So she's definitely one. But I mean, again, I know tons of women that rhyme and are on the same thing. I'm on this. There's a lot of us out here again. Um, with the internet, you, we don't have to just accept what's on the radio. We can, you know, we artists have their band camp pages, they have YouTube pages, you know, there's a, a, all just so much music out there that we can access um, without having to, to settle for what they tell us we should like and what we should listen to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. And just as you said, you know, um, you sign a contract, you definitely have to do what you have to do in order to pay that loan off. Like, just as you talked about earlier, there's so much sexism in the industry, period. Um, and and when I when I say when I when I say that you take me back to the true essence of hip hop, you know, back in the day, you had, you know, your your some MCs that, um, you know, talked about sex this that, and the third. But when I say true essence is that I remember when female MCs in the back were fully clothed. That's what I mean by the true essence and just spitting and just rhyming, you know, like like guys would. But at, but at the end of the day, they had so much respect, just like you. The two H's in your name is for your stripes that you received in hip hop. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean is like when you are staying true to yourself and true to who you are, I think that that's more than anything, because I really feel that the industry really has its demons and it really has. Uh, so many different types of things that can change or can strip you of who you are if you don't even keep yourself grounded, if you don't know who you are. Right. You know? That's that's the that's the big part because again, you know, women are not, you know, monolithic. Like we all have different aspects. So I think it's I don't I don't necessarily have a problem with women tapping into their sexuality and all that. But let's just have some some balance. Like it's yeah. you know that's that's all I ever ask for. I don't have a problem with a Nikki or a Cardi. What I have a problem with is the absence of the the balance to that. Mm. Because yeah. we gotta balance it. Because in 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 it's real it's realistic. It's realistic. Like we there's more than one type of woman out there. You know, it and is. we should, and we should be. Um, shown in in all of our splendor you know um and that's all i just feel like to, it seems that now to be empowered it has to be about sex yeah and yeah. that there's so many more ways although it, it you know being you know in, in in tune with yourself sexually is very empowering there's so many other aspects of that as well that's all yeah. i mean but you know i i um i i feel like everybody has their role that they play you know everyone it's not realistic to think that everyone's going to be the same because even in the night okay in the 90s we had nikki b we had yeah. Ray, we had uh you know ladybug mecca we had bahamadia but then we had the brat and we had boss and we had you know we had missy and then we had we had eve and we had kim and we had foxy so we had so much representation and it just seems like now it's one it's one homogenized uh version but i feel like within the indie music scene we're getting back to that yeah where we have so many different and i love that it's definitely there we just are not necessarily seeing on the mainstream but it is definitely there definitely yeah, I, I definitely agree i definitely agree what would you consider the four main elements of hip-hop graph djing b-boy b-girling and um mc for sure that's you know yeah. the foundation yeah definitely definitely i mean i i remember oh my god like you know when everything was just as a little girl like i used to love seeing b-boying i used to love seeing the graffiti yeah. um oh my so many movies that were based you yes. know what i mean on that back in back in the 80s yes. you know 
So it, it was it, it was a part of my childhood. I'm thankful that I was able to see that, um, to see hip hop evolve over the years as well. And, you know, as for you, you know, one of my my favorite songs that I had the, you know, the the pleasure of listening to, Barbarella. <laughs> um your flow in that record is ridiculous. And I know, I know that you're working on new music. And I want to talk about that before I let you go tonight. What can we expect? What's coming up for Star? What can we expect? Can we expect more flow like Barbarella? Or what can we expect coming into 20? We're leaving out 2021, coming into 2022. <laughs> well, I'm working on an album with Pete Rock. Woo! So, right. So, that's what you have to expect. Yes. <laughs> Powerful, I, I, I feel, powerful. I, I'm feeling really good. Like the beats are just like in, incredible. And I know. the writing that they're bringing out of me is just, it's like, wow, I'm finally at that point where I'm like, okay, I'm super comfortable. I know what I want to do. I know who I am as an artist and I have the perfect, perfect soundscape because Pete is my favorite producer. So yeah. I have to pinch myself. <laughs> yeah, and I listen to the beats and I'm like, he really fucks with me because the beats he made for me, <laughs> custom made for me, he wants me to win. So yeah. I'm very excited. Yes, we're going to be, I'm going to be fully in my Barbarella bag, no doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely, <laughs> fully, definitely. You got to come back. Fully yeah. bar work, a lot of <laughs> it, yes. I'm in the gym. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I can't I can't wait to hear it. And I know it's going to be spectacular. But before I let you go, before you leave me tonight, give everybody, you know, your handles on Twitter, um, your social media, your website where they can, um, you know, reach you. OK, so I'm going to just let y'all know now my Twitter is where I let off steam. I'm a huge troll. I'm a comedian. I like to fuck with people. So if you follow me on Twitter, just understand what you're walking into. Don't expect, expect the unexpected. I, I, I have a lot of fun on Twitter. Um, I'm star there, S-T-A-H-H-R. Uh, my Instagram was hacked. I actually was almost at 10,000 back in May and someone hacked me. So I had to start all over. So I am star is Barbarella now. Um, and my website is star music, S T A. H-H-R-M-U-S-I-C dot com. I have music on all digital service providers. Uh, I have a band camp page. I'm not really on Facebook like that, but I do have a Facebook page, whatever fan page. But S-T-A-H-H-R, I'm the only one. There are other people that use it, but as far as the MC, there's only one S-T-A-H-H-R. I've seen a lot of people using my spelling, but... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I had this spelling since like 97. Yeah. yeah but um, yeah, so that's where I am. And I'm just, like I said, right now I'm, I'm working. I'm probably going to, you know, write for about another hour when I get off of here with you. So I mean, that's the space because I was in a kind of a lull mm. um, with my music. I've been, you know, I've been putting out music since 98. So I've been, you know, on a roller coaster. And I, you know, I had gotten really comfortable with my, you know, my, Diana Prince. I had put Wonder Woman, my Wonder Woman costume in the closet. I was really in my <laughs> Diana Prince. And, um, you know, releasing Barbarella and No Doubts and Mother's Milk, the single that I put out last year, uh, that really touched the way it was supposed to touch. Like, you know, Chuck D got all the way behind Bar that Barbarella. He pushed that Barbarella record like I was his artist. He's yeah. still pushing me. You know, um, so that was good. That was good for me. And though, and that single I, is actually how I got to where I am because the No Doubt song put me on Pete's radar. Mm. So, uh, you know, because I have a line in there where I say Chocolate Boy Wonder. You know what I'm talking about? I said, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking, call the dude Chocolate Boy Wonder. So he's like, he said, I had heard of you. And then I heard that song and I'm like, yeah, I got to work with her. Like, that's it. And that, and that, you know, and that opened that door and we, you know, his brother connected us. Yeah. So yeah, that Barbarella was, uh, and I hated that song. That's what really, so oh my God, that record is so I dope. Sat, I sat on Barbarella for like three years. 
I sat on it. I was not happy with it. So for it to have been received the way that it was, is just so, you know, humbling. Big up to um, Directors Inc. Films for that video and for the No Doubts video um, that, you know, my visuals helped a lot with that too. So like I said, it's, you know, if it's in you and it's for you to do, it's, you just have to just keep riding it out. I mean, like I, every time I try to walk away from music, it just, I keep getting pulled right back. So yeah, no. let me go yeah. ahead and do this when I'm in, after I do this thing with Pete, I don't know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll let me retire. Who knows? Maybe I get to do one with like Premiere next or the Rizzo. Or I the, know, right? Or, hey. or, 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 or organized noise <laughs> yes. out there, you know? <laughs> I know, exactly, exactly. But thank you so much for coming on the show and kicking it with me tonight. I can't wait to hear the new music. So I will de- I will definitely be, I'll follow you on Twitter. So I will be checking you out on Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm over there causing, causing much panic. Ah. <laughs> they mad about that. The over there, boy, they got, they mad. They I know, mad. I know, I know. It, it was hilarious. Mad. It was he, hilarious. He's not a musician. She obviously doesn't know any. Uh, girl, the stuff I read, I'm like, y'all, y'all, why you care of what a exactly. stranger on the internet has to say? So what, lady? I'm going to keep listening to the samples and overanalyze the music. You don't tell me what to do. Y'all give me too much control. And when people get upset, again, that troll, I love trolling. It's fun. So I'm going to be doing that as soon as we log off. I'm going right <laughs> Oh my, let me see my notifications. What's going on? <laughs> but thank you again so much thank for coming you. in and chilling with me tonight. Yeah, I had a great time. And oh, speaking of voices, yours is amazing, girl. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm I'm here for it. Thank yes. you. So thank keep you. Thank what you, you so do much. as well. I will. I definitely will. I definitely will. It's much appreciated. Likewise. So this is a nice good vibe. Yes, it Feel was. Yes, good. it was. Yes. You got to come back now when the music comes oh, out. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You can bet. All right. All, All right. right. Take care. All right. Take care. All right, y'all. Again, this has been Industry Conversations one-on-one. DJ Gates, where you at, baby? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. (laughs) Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you so much for coming on with me tonight, kicking it with me. Um, And actually, thank you so much for the the mix. No problem. No problem. This this was new for me, so I I had a good time. (laughs) Yeah, 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 definitely. I had a good time, too. I hope you are staying safe and keeping safe. Um, yes. You know, as well, you know, through this pandemic and, you know, the rise of, of this Delta variant. But, you know, definitely, hopefully you can come back again next Thursday, kick it with me. And, um, yeah, you know, definitely get into some more conversations. Yes, anytime. Anytime, sis. I'm here. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in for Industry Conversations. One-on-one. Um, also, shouts out to um, Ben Also, shouts out to Preston Magazine. And also, thank you all again so much for tuning in to Industry Conversations 101. We'll see you all again next Thursday, 9 p.m., right here on YouTube Live. It's your girl, Nisha, signing out. Good night, everybody.